Hello, mortals, and welcome to episode three of Dice X Machina called season two called Unbinding of the Titans. Uh, let's go around the horn and introduce everybody who's here tonight. We are sadly without our friend Ashlyn Rose tonight. She had a last minute reason why she couldn't make it, but she'll be here again soon. We, we adore Ashlyn. We miss her and we will carry on as best we can without her little bit of light and joy that she brings to the show. Um, first of all, let's say hello to our returning friend, Jordan. Hello, Jordan. Hi, everybody. Uh, my name is Jordan Pridgen, and I am playing Lysandros, who is a uh, satyr rogue, who is a gambler and a trickster and an illusionist. And, uh, he, you know, he just sort of does what he do because he was semi-immortal for a long time, and now he's not. And so he owes a lot of people money because of reasons explained in season one. <laughs> do -do -do. And let's just do the whole episode tonight. We'll talk about what happened. Um, yes. All right. Uh, and let's say hello to our new friendly faces who have joined us this season. Hello, Omega. Oh, hey, my name is Omega Jones, also known as Critical Bar, Critical Bar across all social media channels. Uh, I am playing Zendar, the half-Gorgon artificer wizard, who is, you know, searching for for nature, joy, and other things um, yet to be... Well, something's been mentioned, but let's see if they remember. Uh, <laughs> yeah, uh, that, and yeah, that that's me. I'm just, just happy to be here. Oh, and um, Zendar is a follower of Farika, the goddess of affliction and medicine and poison and all that jazz. Uh, hmm. Yeah, that me... And uh, because Ashwin's not here, I will just say we can all imagine that she made an angry snarl face when you mentioned Farika. Uh, and then <laughs> last but not least, if certainly not, let's say hello to Joy. Hello, I am Joy and I'm playing Marifine and uh, I am a satyr who's a bard and she is trying to uncover some things in her past that she doesn't have answers to. Ooh, mysterious. <laughs> and she may or may not have weird throat issues today. <laughs> <laughs> and I don't think we have talked yet about your deity affiliation, but I believe that we decided on Crufix for you. Is that what we decided on? Yes. Great. Awesome. That way the audience knows and Dom can update the mm. wiki. Um, very good. And... My name is Riley Silverman, and I will be playing literally everybody else, including Callie tonight. Uh, before we start the show, a couple of announcements we can get out, get out of the way up top. We are, of course, aiming for $250 an episode as our goal. Uh, hitting $250 allows us to continue to pay this amazing cast and keep content like this on the Saving Throw Air. Even if you can't afford to back us, please spread the word, share the stream with friends and family. As a bonus incentive, we do hit 250 tonight. You will unlock a live pool from an active Magic the Gathering deck, and I will use at least one of the cards in the adventure next week. And a tip of just $15 allows you to send us a message, which we'll read live on the air. We're calling it a message from the gods or a revel. And send us a goofy or heartfelt message and crush our fundraising goals all in one. So it's great. And now I'm going to pass it over to Omega. Yeah, uh, uh, we want to uh, take some time to thank our season sponsors uh, this season, uh, Roll20 and Hero Forge. Roll20 is a virtual tabletop space that gets you access to great maps and tokens, sound effects, dynamic lighting, and so much more. We'll actually be using Roll20 today at some point, maybe. Who knows? Let's try not to die and have to deal with the map. Uh, but if we do, we'll be using Roll20. If you use exclamation Roll20 in chat, you can get more info on that. We also want to give a huge shout out and thank you to Hero Forge giving us these uh, wonderful, wonderful, uh, uh, well, we designed our all of our characters in uh, Hero Forge. It's a wonderful customization tool um, that you can use to, hey, you don't have to paint all the minis automatically. You can just do it there. Uh, they have a range of different um, entities, uh, humanoids, tabaxi, snake people, hi, um, and so much more. <laughs> Uh, if you do exclamation hero forge in chat again, more info and during Gen Con, you can get five bucks off any color printed mini using <laughs> code Gen Con 2021. We also have a big partnership uh, with Die Hard Dice. Shout out to Die Hard Dice. Uh, you can you you can save ten percent uh, at Die Hard Dice by using the code Saving Throw Show at checkout. Use a command uh, dh exclamation dh dice in chat 
for different links uh, and info on that. And hey, guess who also has dice with with Die Hard Dice? Me, right here. We have a whole Forte set. Uh, I'm not sure what's left, but there are some things in there. Uh, you can get uh, some 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 stuff to support. So do that. Back to you. All right. Well, thank you very much for that. And thank you all for watching both live on Twitch or if you're watching us on YouTube. Thank you so much. If you're on YouTube, do us a solid like, comment, subscribe, smash that bell, the whole nine yards. It really helps us out as a channel, helps grow our audience, things like that. Uh, same thing with your podcasting apps. Leave us reviews. Thank you on your app. It helps people find the show. It's a great way to do it. And speaking of which, if you want to support the show, we are soft launching our new Exploration Society fundraising tool through Coffee this month. Enter Coffee in the chat. Check it out. On Coffee, you can tip as you would regularly, but you can also join the society with a monthly tip amount, and you get the same great rewards you would get on the Saving Throw Panthe or page Pantheon Patreon. I'm thinking about Theros too much, and you can unlock things like toast with your tips plus. Coffee doesn't take a cut, so nearly 100% of your tip goes straight to the channel after PayPal fees, of course, but that is inevitable. Always get you somewhere. But that is a great new thing that we're doing. That's our soft launch for the new uh, Save and Throw Show Exploration Society, and we thank you for continuing to support that. And with that out of the way, are you all ready to dive back into Theros? <laughs> no. Let's do it. Okay, well, we can take that off. That's fine. Okay, we'll do yeah. it. All right. I think we're out, right? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We'll do it next uh, week. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> great. Well, since we're here, speaking <laughs> of last week, you had all converged unexpectedly in the agora of a town known as Neolanton, where you all had different things you were pursuing, tasks that you were trying to find, and some of you were interested in finding a certain shady underworld figure. Some of you were just looking for a bounty. Others of you were just trying to solve your own personal quests. But in the midst of that struggle, and after a short chase with a with a errant pickpocket who may have had ulterior motives based on her employer, you then found yourselves in a strange and very violent battle against a a massive group of water elementals who rose up from the sea and started uh, marching their way towards the land, which reminded at least one of uh, two of you, one who's not here, of a prophecy that you once heard mentioned briefly in the house of a sage months earlier after the end of your last quest. And that's where we pick up. You find yourselves standing on the same docks that you were. The City watch folks of the town are are tending to their wounded, trying to prevent any further damage from buildings collapsing or any sort of effects that the water elementals that are now seem to have have receded away and are making sure that everyone is safe. They seem to have the situation underhand, but you find yourself standing on a dock, being looked at by a cat. And as far as the cat goes, mm -hmm. the cat showed itself to Callista, not really us. Yeah, Call uh, Callie noticed it first. Callie, Callie was the one who perceived it. I would say that after this, you do all kind of notice it. It's, it's not hiding. It's kind of sitting almost as if it was watching what happened, observing. Hmm. Well, I, I admit I'm surprised that this thing didn't run like I assume all the other animals did when uh, these, you know, giant water things just kind of charge the shore. And Callie, in her typical annoyed fashion with you, is like, Lysandros, she's like, that's the cat of the sage. Oh, oh, yeah. Remember she had a whole hut with cats running around? Yeah, but wait, there were a bunch of cats, right? Like, I I, I don't know. I, sorry if this is like, I just don't have as good a sense of picking out different cats. But I don't know. I just kind of thought a cat was a cat, but I'll take your word for it. Okay, well, to be fair, that one did disappear under a chair and then, and then reappear. So there's a lot of God stuff going on, and I don't know if I care for it. Oh, yeah. God stuff. Sooner or later, 
It happens if you just kind of walk around enough. Is this cat thing like important or something? Uh, well, okay. So, uh, just to catch you up a little bit, now that uh, <laughs> you two are our great new friends, uh, basically, uh, we You're spent some dinner. time... I'm not buying your dinner. All right. We, we'll talk about the terms of the bet later. <laughs> but, uh, basically, we had a whole thing where uh, Callie had to find somebody who uh, was a follower of Phoenix, who was me for a while, and uh, it's complicated now, uh, basically. So I could read a uh, magical code on the back of a mask, if I'm remembering correctly. And then we went and found a temple, and uh, Phoenix tricked me. And uh, there were cats involved, because the cats were the... Trust me, the cat's important. I'm lost. Yeah, well, the, the gist of things is that if you go with the flow, eventually God stuff happens. Um, Phoenix tricked you, and now there's a cat, and now you want... Okay, well, the cat happened first, and then Phoenix tricked me. But why uh, is the cat here? That's what I'm confused about. Well, I bet the cat has its own motives, honestly. <laughs> I mean, why are any of us here? It starts to look really bored and like kind of like licks itself and like paws at itself and then starts to walk away. And similar to how Callie saw happen, there's like a post that maybe has like a torch on it that's being used to light the area. And the cat walks behind the post but does not reappear from the other side of it. Oh, see, now the cat's not here. Are you? See, things just happen. I walk over to Lysandros and immediately put my hand on his forehead. Are you okay? What? It, I just want to like make sure. Sense. I don't know. I th I'm confused. I don't know if that was actually a cat or if it was like a spirit or something. But I think you might be hurt. Did you get hurt? Did the big water thing hit you? Yeah, I mean, it threw a trident at me, but I think I mostly got out of the way. Hey, did you see all those rocks I threw at it? Oh, man, that was great. You threw rocks? Oh, yeah, a bunch of rocks. I didn't see I that. I basically spent the entire time doing nothing but throwing rocks. I don't think it did anything. Oh, well, you know, agree to disagree, right? No, I, don't, I literally don't think it did anything. Big Cat Lady did stuff. Well, I mean, okay, that's fair. <laughs> and also follows with most of my experience with doing anything with uh, Big Cat Lady, Callie. <laughs> but uh, all I would say is that there was a point where I got one of those rocks to skip seven times, which is very difficult. I don't know if it's that difficult. <laughs> well, then, then I bet you can't do it. And I pull a rock out of my pocket and throw it to him. But Lysandros is like just immediately distracted and uh, goes over to kind of look where the uh, the cat went. I have this rock. Hold on. Make yeah. a skip roll. <laughs> I oh, want to no. see how this plays out. This is fun. <laughs> uh, I, I look at uh, the rock. And I look at Marfine for a second. You kind of shrug. And then I look at the, um, the uh, what's this called? The the water the, the, right next to the harbor. Yeah. Um, and I go to throw it, but there is a contraption that's uh, like in my one of my uh, bracers. Okay. And it flicks the rock really fast as I cast Catapult. Okay. To actually catapult it across. <laughs> Okay, is there a roll associated with that spell? I mean, it's a deck save. I mean, it's really just a, it's really a spell to like you can like launch any item and it can hit something. But for okay. me, I don't really care about it hitting something. It's just more so that it flies in a ninety foot, uh, okay. flies hmm. ninety feet, and then I'm aiming it at the gra at the water. Okay. So like, do, 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 do. <laughs> okay. Yeah, uh, I'm gonna say the water does not make its deck save, and you are able to hit the water <laughs> as many times as you wanted to hit. So yeah, if it goes a bunch of times, I think I think you have enough velocity and speed with this catapult, and that it. Yeah, I think I think I think I think it skips at least eight times just so Lysandro sees it happen at least one more time than it did for him. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Okay. All right. I I admit I'm impressed. 
Um, so Lysandros is going to, he pulls a rock out of his pocket and kind of like tosses it into the air a little bit. And uh, uh, Oh, Jesus. <laughs> wait, I'm trying to figure out what the number is for this. Uh, Zindar, if you could make an investigation check. <laughs> I want to know what's <laughs> happening now. <laughs> Is this a reactive check or is this a... I guess it technically should be a check that you choose to make. But I, I, I just... Okay, no, no, it's, it's fine. I, I, I'm asking Trust for me, two th reasons. One, I'll do the roll. Two, I have a passive investigation of 20. So I oh, just wanted do. to uh, see. No, but yeah, yeah, it's, it's an active check. All right, yeah, all right. Yeah, I'll, definitely, I'll definitely do it. I have no issue with that. Uh, <clears throat> 20. 20. <laughs> Okay, it doesn't take you long to realize that the rock I'm throwing is an illusion. <laughs> huh? huh? And he th uh, Lysandros throws it, and it appears to just skip off into the distance, basically as far as you can see. Hmm? Pretty good, right? Did you see that, Marathine? I think that was really cool. Yeah, I still am trying to figure out why. What, what, what's with the cat? And where we just fought all these water <laughs> creatures. I like that at least one character's like, why are we looking at rocks right now? <laughs> <laughs> but like, where did they come from? What 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 was their purpose? Is it, is it connect to the cat? Like, why I'm I'm really fixated on the cat because they just disappeared. You know what? That's a very good question. Uh hey, so Callie, can you like yeah. Smell other cats? She looks at you for like a really good long time deciding if this question is offensive or not. <laughs> and then she just like kind of has like a look on her face that you, Lysandros, have seen a lot, I think, in your time with Callie where she thinks about what you've said and then kind of has a Lysandros moment and then kind of shrugs it off. And she's like, I... I already told you it's Kia's cat. I, what do you mean? Can I? I know what cat it is. Right. What I'm you saying. You saw though, that cat hop up and and she pet it and everything. It like disappeared though, right? So like, can you tell where it went or or anything like that? No, it disappeared. Oh, it's uh, God stuff. I. She's like fine, and then she like makes a big Ugh, sound, and then she smells the air. And she's like, no, I don't smell the cat. I smell a lot of people bleeding because there was a, a fight here. Well, see, I can't smell people bleeding, so that's pretty impressive. It's iron in the air. Um, that's cool. As, as I'm having the conversation, I want to go over to where the big thing dissipated mostly mm -hmm. um, and just see if anything was left by any of them, but mostly around the leader's area. I guess I'll know. I mean, it's a wide elemental, so maybe not, but I guess I'll know if it came with anything or if that was more of a purpose than just raw, I fight stuff. Um, you see a little bit of metal because the big one had... I'm loving whatever's happening with Cat. Oh, I was <laughs> very confused. Uh, is that is that in the game? Okay, I thought someone's real pets were fighting. I was like, what is happening right now? Um, you you see a little bit of metal because you do remember the big one was wearing armor, so it's like the armor that was fitted for it. Um, you do have some glowing water that you took from it, but you haven't had any chance to actually examine I did. that. I yeah. did, yes. Um, that is still glowing. I think the rest of the water has now dissipated enough with the water that is I Dom, I need you I need you to this. stop this this soundboard please. <laughs> it's actually <laughs> crazy. All right, thank you. Um, <laughs> I was like, what is this? I can't handle I'm like I'm like I can't even understand what I'm trying to say, <laughs> let alone what it what uh, let alone people who <laughs> are listening to me can understand what I'm saying. So um yeah so there the, were horses fighting so yeah um wild horses can't carry me away. So uh, yeah, I would say the rest of the water around it, besides what you scooped up before it could dissipate, is pretty normal at this point. I mean, as normal as water in Theros can be. But yeah, you still have this glowing vial of water. Cool. Uh, yeah, I definitely want to look at that, but I might not do that this very second. Yeah. Um, he was just trying to see what might have, you know, kind of 
uh, what's what I'm looking for? Um, like I swept onto shore um, after the big fight. Yeah, I would say the only thing I slept on shore since the fight is maybe these pieces of this armor, but it is definitely like very heavy armor. I don't think that like a mortal or a regular sized person could lift it. Um, it's pretty heavy. What if I levitated? I can't levitate. You could, yeah. Okay. If you don't have the power, then no. I'm pretty sure I don't have that spell. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, that is the uh, that is what's left behind. So where we are at is. Y'all can keep investigating to see anything else is happening. You do get the sense, like I said last week, if you look up and down this like bit of coastline here, that this whole waterfront was being attacked by these things. But once you defeated the leader, the rest of them dissipated. And uh, yeah, so there is, if you want to investigate the cat further, you can. There's also the quest you were already on, which was to investigate the Gorgon. And those are the two big things. But again, you all might have personal quests you wish to look for as well. Uh, Zindar, uh, uh, noticing nothing really there, he kind of just walks back over. Um, well, we were heading this way to go to the, the, the Gorgon, and uh, I would like to go, but I don't know what you all might want to do. Yeah, well, I mean, from my perspective, now that the ocean has stopped attacking us, I'm down to try whatever it is. I mean, I, I know how to get to the, the gambling den. Yeah, I agree. Let's try and see what the Gorgon is up to. And hopefully yeah. we are not interrupted yeah. again. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, I mean, I, I don't know if we could do it without end up getting interrupted again. But the way I see it, if this cat has God stuff going on, then it'll, if we ignore it, eventually come back to us anyway. That's how that God stuff used to, tends to go. I uh, I had a little bit of uh, experience with fate myself for a little while, and uh, turns out it doesn't tend to matter what you do about it. It just kind of goes the way it's supposed to go. I think that, you know, you have a purpose, and um, no matter what you do, you will always find yourself back on that purposeful path. So... It's not saying that fate doesn't have a a hand in what you do. Well, I agree. All right, then. I mean, Callie, if you're down, then let's take these guys guess, back to our old friend's place. Yeah, I guess if we're not going to try to figure out where that cat came from, I guess there's something else we can do. Yeah, the cat will find us. Okay. Um, so yeah, you head, you continue the path that you were going to continue towards the, the Gorgon's Lair. It is a spillway along the coastline where if people don't know it, they think it's just a drainage pipe that goes out to the sea, but it's actually, there is a walkway that never quite gets submerged as the high tide comes in, but is obviously a lot more noticeable in the dark if you're looking for it. So that tends to be when most people who would want to visit it are, are looking for it. So you do find your way in there. I will say Lysandros, as someone who comes to this a lot, you do notice that the spillway is a little bit wetter than normal. And you think it probably, I might even make you roll for this. You could probably assume that it has something to do with the massive levels of water that have come rushing through here in the last period of time. So, hmm. Well, it turns out after uh, the the ocean literally shows up and tries to attack you, being an underground uh, gambling den might not actually have been the the best place to be. But uh, I mean, hopefully things are still going on in here. Um, I would assume if it's a place that willingly made its domain next to the entrance of. Um, the beginning of you know the sea they probably have things inside that i don't know protects from that stuff yeah well there's only one way to find out all uh, right yeah i guess let's go on in i think i'm missing one of you um let me see here where was where was in case we need it um, we don't really have to necessarily hop into roll 20 right now but some reason Lysandros seems to have disappeared or 
Oh, I see what's happening now. No, the um, snake was on top of Callie because you had the snake on Callie's leg. I remember mm-hmm. that. Great. Ah. Uh, oh, yeah. Whoop. He definitely comes back to me. Wee. Yay. <laughs> All right. So we find ourselves. Where was I? Ah, perfect. Um, yeah, you find yourself. Like like uh, like Zendar said, there is there was some measures put in place to keep from the whole place from from flooding. There are little spillways alongside the walkway, so as the water came in, it kind of redirected it a little bit. It was just a little bit messy, um, but as you enter into this den, you don't hear the normal boisterous sounds that you tend to hear on a, on a typical gambling night. Normally there are people just cheering at tables and shouting at each other and things like that. You do hear shouting, but it seems to be the way you would if a bunch of people are kind of gathering in a place after an event has happened, after a traumatic event. Like, so everyone's kind of like, you hear people shouting words about like getting people blankets and getting people beds and tables and stuff like that. So, it is. It is not. It is not the noise you expected to find at this this house of ill repute. Typically, this this gambling den, um, and you realize as you walk in that the Gorgon's lair has kind of been like repurposed tonight as almost like a like a refuge. It's become like a shelter because this whole town has just been attacked by all these monsters, and you're. You might be a little surprised that the Gorgon has opened up her doors to allow people in, but that's what's happening. So as you walk in, um, I think I just switched this over to the map, but I could be wrong. Oh yeah, I did. So we're at the very top of the map if you're in Roll20. Uh, there should be a revealed area. I think you're all there. Um, oh no, Zimdar is not there. Let me put Zimdar in there. My snake is though. Yeah, so somehow, <laughs> somehow, Zimdar didn't make, somehow Zimdar didn't make the cut when I copied. Um, that's valid. Sometimes it is a little bit. You stayed stuck. outside for some reason. We were like, "We'll take your snake." I'm gonna try this one more time. Actually, uh, you all would have walked in right before me. Before me, I would have like slowed down a little bit. And who? Hey, buddy. Uh, and as we get to the place, um, I would just whisper to Dari, who's on my shoulder. Okay, I don't really know what to ask if I see her, and I don't know if I should just be upfront about it, but. Um, this could be the moment, and uh, I'm nervous, but we'll get to it together. The snake kind of does a little slither and flickers its tongue at you, and you know, <laughs> you 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 feel like it's saying, "Hey, you got this," if needed. I don't really know how snakes communicate. That's, I guess that's kind of... That's <laughs> <a lot. laughs> yeah. I don't know what kind of body language snakes normally give out, but it, it kind of gives you like a look. It, Dari gives you a look that says like, hey, you've been through some scary stuff, but this should be fine. <laughs> All right. Uh, as you walk in... Uh, so, uh, see- <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. <laughs> What? What? Did we lose? Did we lose Jordan? Yeah, I think we lost. Okay, I think you're back. Jordan, you back? <laughs> what? Well, I, I I see you guys. Everything is fine. Okay. D- did you I froze freeze you, for you guys? Am I gone? Am I there? Okay, you froze for us. For, mm-hmm. I, I I couldn't hear you for a second, but I think now you're okay. Um. Okay. So, uh, Jordan or Lysandros, as you walk in, you see a familiar face. You see a thug whose name is Duanor, but you have affectionately nicknamed Dewey. And he Dewey! sees you and he goes, oh, oh, it is you. It is, uh, it is the Sator. Hey, Dewey, how's it going? Uh, it is not, it is not going well. There is lots of damage. People have been hurt and we are trying to help. Listen, I want to tell you, uh, this is maybe not time. Maybe we should talk more about it later, but Last time I met you, there was lots of disagreements with friend of yours and me and personalities clashing. And I just want to say that I am fine. I'm sorry if I came off on wrong foot. I am working on being better people person. I am working on being better at communicating with people and not expressing needs in threatening ways when not necessary. Look, Dewey, 
I've been me for a long time. If there's anything I know by now, it's that I almost definitely had it coming. So, hey, water under the bridge. Oh, bad. This was mean thing to say tonight. There's lots of water in, under the bridge and hurts lots of people. Um, oh, yeah. No, definitely too soon. Did not think that idiom out. <laughs> if you are here to gamble, I'm afraid there are no tables available tonight. Uh, there are tables that are being used as, as triage centers to help people who, who need help. Uh, no, actually, believe it or not, I'm not here to gamble tonight uh, because I think I was explicitly told that if I came back here to gamble at any point, uh, I would be physically harmed, I believe. Uh, I think it was way more explicit than that. Uh, but either way, uh, basically, I'm here because uh, my new friends here uh, wanted to see the place. They're he new pauses and, and goes, this makes a lot of sense. I believe that there is... I believe there is sketch of you in one hallway that says do not allow to play gamble. So this this does seem likely as a thing that would happen. Oh yeah. No, I've seen it a couple times. I've been back a few times in disguise. <laughs> oh yeah. Okay, we will need to find a way to detect disguises again. This is a good note that you have given me. Thank you. And I will let my 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 supervisors know it's, this is a hole in our security. So I appreciate this feedback. Uh, Zindar kind of Hey, you know scuttles. what we do? We're always happy to help. <laughs> Zindar scuttles over. Uh, you said there's a lot of hurt people down here? Uh, yes, there is There is a triage center where we are working on the wounded. We have, we have suspended our gambling duties to help with these people. I, um, I'm new to Neil Lantern. But I am a, a healer, uh, a traveler. Um, I work with a lot of um, medicinal things and, and, and herbs and, and potions. And I can help if you all need more help. This would be very appreciated. Yes, we have had quite a bit. And he, he goes, thank you. And he like leads you with him. Uh, there is like kind of a little walkway. There are some stairs to go down, and I will reveal this big section here. But there's a big open court, court kind of courtyardy area. You kind of get the sense that where you are is like maybe an old plaza that's been like converted into this underground area. And actually, the more you walk into it, the more you realize you might actually be right underneath the agora that you were at earlier. And so it's like all happening underneath the main part of the city. And you kind of walked this tunnel, took you back underneath where you previously were. Um, there are a bunch of tables lined up where normally people will be playing some sort of dice games or some sort of card games. But instead, there are there are people lined up in rows that have all been injured in attacks. They've things have broken on them. They've got broken bones. They've got you know injuries from like a lot of like force injuries from the water crushing down on them. And there are people running around. Normally, people who would normally be running gambling tables, but right now they're running around with poultices and and various you know, bandages and things like that, trying to help people and standing in the middle of the room, kind of directing everything is a lithe, tall, skinny, uh, blonde human woman who one of you definitely recognizes. Uh, and she is very much in charge and she is very much using her power for better than you're used to. Um, I sent a message in our chat. I was, Oh, being sorry. incognito, um, but um, uh, if, I will see if I can get that face. If they seem like they're like leading the 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 charge as far as like healing and stuff goes, um, Zendar will c kind of again kind of scuttle over. Um, uh, hi. Um, I was told that um, you all might need some help with some of the hurt people. Oh, um, yes, we, she kind of gives you a look and then you can tell she's thinking about something and then she decides to let it go. And she says, yes, we have lots of people here who, who are hurt. So if, if you have the ability to help them, we would very much appreciate it. Uh, yeah, I, I do a lot of traveling and I work with a lot of flowers and medicines. Um, so I, 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 I came here for a different reason, but this the, the hurt people are, are more important. 
Well, I, I appreciate it. Um, thank you. Um, what I'll have you do, Zendara, go ahead and make a medicine check for me. Uh, and we'll, this will be like a general medicine check to see how well you're able to help people out. Yeah. I'm going to guidance myself. Sure. That makes sense. Uh, I get scared when I use. Oh, that was scary. Oh, God, that was scary. It was almost <laughs> a two. Uh, oh, 22. Okay. Yeah. I think that you are able to be extremely effective at helping people out. I think that you're, it seems like people's like level of understanding of medicine in the area, they've mostly been doing a lot of, like, like I said, triage and kind of like fixing things in the moment, but you're actually getting, they've been getting people like stabilized, but you're actually able to start helping them get to recovering. Like they're, they're not stable now. They're actually like getting to be conscious. They're getting to be healthy. And so I would say it takes you, that takes you probably about a few hours. I think that's a lot of time you're spending going table to table and doing things with lots of people. That's right. uh, while that's happening, uh, what are you, let's, let's just do like a brief, not honestly downtime, but we'll fast forward through some stuff. So what are, what are Marifine and uh, what are Lysandros doing? I think Callie will say is using her strength to move heavy objects around and like get more beds set up, help people carry. If, if, if Zindar's asking for any like heavy medicine things being brought out with somebody, she's carrying boxes and things like that. What are Amerifine and uh, Lysandra's doing during this time period? Uh, I actually have, well, not a lot, but I have some healing abilities of, as well. Like I can cure w wounds. I can put people to sleep if they're in vain. <laughs> I don't know how okay. smart that is, but I mean, I could. <laughs> Okay. Um, but yeah, just being, I can be helpful with, um, any other healing that would need to be done. <clears throat> okay. Why don't you also make a medicine check for me as well? And I'll, I'll let you do it at advantage because you are helping Zindar out. So I'll say like Zindar had a really high success. So I'll say based on his success. Okay. You got a 15, which is pretty good. I, I will say that what you use is you use your cure wounds. I think Zindar directs you to people who have like more possibly mortal wounds or wounds that could have killed them, some mm -hmm. serious injuries. And Zindar, do you have healing abilities as well as a as an artificer? Okay, so Zindar uses most of his magic as he can to help that those people out, but there are more people than he has the resources to do that with. So he asks you to please help him out with that as well. So that's what you do. And Lysandros, what do what do you do? So Lysandros isn't going to kid himself and think that he can heal anybody because that, that is just not in his skill set. Uh, but he kind of like goes around and like tries to help people out however he can, like if people need something held. But it's also like sort of trying to not necessarily catch the attention of uh, of anybody who would uh, maybe have a beef to pick with him here. So, okay, I'm gonna have you make a stealth check at disadvantage because you're here for quite a long time and you're in somebody else's well, domain. He, he, here's what I think I want to do. Actually. Okay. So even though my relationship with Phoenix has been a little uh, messy recently. Do I still have my like piety to him that I had early? Er, um, I'll let you make that decision. Do you think that Lysandro still has it? Uh, the amphitheater. Thank you for the raid. Uh, do you think that uh, Lysandro still has his piety, or do you think he had to start over? That, that's going to be a call. I'm gonna let you make as a, as a player. I would say I think so, because he sort of never like re like he had a bit of a falling out with Phoenix, but he never, even when he like kind of tried to go the other path of things, like he never stopped thinking like a follower of Phoenix. And he all like Lysandros is also the sort who uh, didn't, he didn't choose the Phoenix life. The Phoenix life choose chose him. Okay. Uh, <laughs> that's just sort of his like natural inclination. So what what I want to do is use one of the the free daily uh, disguise selves that it gives me to just turn myself into 
a slightly different version of a satyr than what I look like. Okay, then I will let you make your stealth check at regular and not at disadvantage. And the reason why I'm Perfect. still making you roll stealth is because Dewey did see you when you came in and you had not changed then. So there is still the ability, he might have told somebody like, I that say that I watched change form is, is say that I, you know. And <laughs> I think it's totally fair. And to make things a little more interesting because he doesn't, you know what? I don't want to just look like another satyr. I look like a human instead. I look like some rando human I picked up off the street. Okay. And the way that this ability works my shadow still looks like a satyr. So uh, there's always a chance someone could notice the horns in the shadow. Okay, yeah. That I think is that's so fair. bad and so good at the same time. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this. So I am going to give you inspiration to use later. You can't use it on this roll, but I like ah. that you gave yourself that difficulty. So I'm going to give that to you as a thing you're allowed to do later. All right. Okay, so my stealth roll is a. And while he's doing that, I have a question in chat. Yes. You know, yeah, I, I guess I don't. I never asked you. I never. We never talked about. It, so I guess I'm not sure. But that's all. Um, I will let you decide that. So uh, the question, I'll be, I'll be on top of the table with this. You're asking how that's much fine. piety your character has. Um, yep. You're right. We haven't talked about this yet. Um, how much piety do you think that Zindar has for for uh, Farika? Without saying a lot, he has a high devotion to Farika, both from him and his upbringing with his father. He's okay. very, very devoted. I will say then, and and you're also right right now, like kind of at, like acting in your Farika ness because you're healing people and you're using that part of your worship of her. Mm -hmm. So let me find where is the. Oh, I'm in the wrong section. I'm in the adventure section, not the God section. Let me just look at real quickly um, while Jordan finished what you're doing. And then, so you disguise yourself, but what are you doing while disguised? Jordan. Uh, I just kind of go around and observe and like uh, mostly pick out the people that I know, see what's going on and uh, just get, I, I want to get a scope of like one, what the, the like muscle is in the area and uh, and maybe help out a little bit too. But mostly just in ways where like, if someone is, you know, trying to, I don't know, get bandages, I'll like hand it to them and stuff. But I, he kind of flits all over the place. Lysandros isn't the sort to just like stay still in one place in the room. Okay. Uh, so did you make that stealth check for me? Yeah, Already? it was a 13. Okay. Let me come back to that. I will say to answer your question about Farika Zindar, I would say that right now we'll treat you like you have a plus 10 piety. So you just so there's something to move up to. I don't want to like give you the biggest thing right away to start the game off because that's less fun. Oh, makes sense. But, makes sense. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. So I'll say you have that. Um, yeah, because I, I think like I think I'll say that you're kind of feeling yourself getting that as you're doing this like you feel like farika is like you just feel a little bit of her blessing through you as you work to fix things up because you you know you are currently using you're curing people who are afflicted by something pretty bad right now so it's not, it's not a poison per se but something has happened that's hurt a lot of people and you were using your time to heal them and so you feel like farika is like really happy that you're choosing this option right now okay. um and then like Sanders, where are you at right now with uh, Phoenix, what is your piety? Was that I give you 10 last season when you were still at it? Uh, yes, at one point, okay. but I will, I, I will say I that know, I don't know if I'm at full 10, I could see it of going back a little bit, but I think I'm, yeah, I'm gonna, uh, I'm gonna say you're at five right now. I'm gonna say you're, 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 you're not me. all the way back down to your three, but you're not fully at 10 again. But I can still do my, my, my little face trick thing there, yeah. You Which, if I couldn't do it through spells. Phoenix, I could do it through spells, yeah. But, um, okay. uh, but Right at this moment, I am going to log off for just a second, come back on, see if I can fix the weird little delay that's happening. Okay, great. I just want to give myself a chance to roll for this character. I thought I had a NPC character sheet ready to go, and now I don't know where it went. So I'm just trying to find that. Yeah, I'll just pick a random one. All right. All right. <laughs> so let's just do that. That is a... Uh... Yeah, this makes sense. Oh, one thing I'll say for uh, Marfine and Zindar, you do notice that a lot of the people here that are like 
workers or like guards or security for this space. Most of their armor is like a hodgepodge of armor they have taken off of other soldiers. So it's not like they've got like a specific like shiny armor that's like for this look like this facility. It's more like they've probably gotten in fights and stuff with the with the local authorities a few times and taken the armor they can when they've won those fights and took off. So you kind of notice that definitely as a thing that's happening. Okay. okay, passive perception is 12. Mm. Just do a quick check. Okay. Uh, you said you got a 13 on your stealth check, uh, Lysandros? Mm -hmm. Okay. You don't get noticed right away. You actually don't immediately get picked up by by the woman who is who is leading the charge. You 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 know who she is. You know how to stay away from her. Um, you're, you feel like you keep having moments where... She kind of like looks and you can tell she's thinking about it. And then she's like, gets distracted by somebody else calling for her to, to help out with something. Makes sense. Okay. So I would say that a, a good few hours passes and it's getting late in the night at this point. Cause it was already evening when you all kind of were heading towards this area before, before the attack happened. So I think it's getting late. It's getting, you, you are given the option to sleep here if you so choose. Um, but it seems like everybody else is kind of retiring for the night. But uh, that is up to you. It is If you want to essentially take a long rest here and deal with more things in the morning, you can, or you can continue your investigation at night. Well, you two are the ones who have things you want to find. Do you want to find it now, or can we get some sleep first? Uh, uh, Omega, I'm not hearing you. I think you're Sorry, muted. I was saying, I was saying, I was saying, I was, I was, I was, I was going to let Marfine go first if, she want, if there's anything she oh. wanted to do. Yeah. <sighs> um, well, today, well, there's been so many people that needed healing. I wouldn't mind resting for the night before... Uh, anything goes anything else pops up and happens to us at random <laughs> sure okay hey yeah. i say you know what you never want to confront a powerful crime lord uh when you haven't had your sleep great so uh i think dewey <laughs> takes you to a room that is like probably typically used for like richer like I don't want to say a high roller suite, but that kind of vibe. It's not quite as high. That like it's not like a full on like luxury space, but it's when people come in from out of town that don't necessarily want to be seen that much on the surface, and so they're given a place to stay in the gambling den while they're in town. And it's got a few. It's got enough beds for all, everybody. Um, it's it's a comfortable space, and you're able to get a long rest. So everybody can go ahead and take the long rest for themselves in D and D Beyond if you'd like, or on your sheet, however you choose to use them. Um, you're all in the same room. Do you all have your own spaces to sleep in? Do you discuss anything at all while you're in bed and in, in your room? Not me. I think after all of the work, um, you know, healing people and all that, he goes to sleep pretty quickly. However, he um, goes to sleep, but he doesn't actually go to sleep. Um, he's going to wait for the others to go to bed, and then okay. he's going to get back out. I mean, he's going to kind of try to sneak out. Not like sneak in the sense like he's not trying to be like weird, but just just let them sleep, and he's going to. Um, Head back out of the room, looking for um, whoever the Gorgon is. Okay, um, where do you where do you try to look for that? What is what do you think? Uh, I go back to the original area that we were in um, to see because uh, he never asked the person who seemed like they were in charge. He never asked uh, them like, who they were, or anything like that. So he's going to go back and um, look for that person and then ask them for any. Um, information okay uh yeah you find her i think that she is feeling like she she seems like somebody who was very tired herself but has been a little bit afraid to go to sleep because she's been so busy helping people she wants to be she wants to stay in charge she wants to be looking out for people that makes sense um then you know while everything's kind of chill and stuff he's going to walk over and kind of guess um 
it seems like everything is uh, pretty relaxed now, at least not as hectic as before. Yes, I I appreciate the help that you and your friends provided. It was it was actually very useful. Um, I don't normally use my space for this, but this is a city that matters to me. This is a little piece of my kingdom here, so I want to make sure the people who live here are protected. Are you... Um, I get the sense that you have, like, I don't know, um, you seem like a leader? Uh, <laughs> and I, I, I don't know much. Uh, I was actually looking for someone who you might know then. Um, um, I think, well, I mean, we're in her space. The, 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 um, the, the Gorgon? <laughs> she laughs and she seems very entertained by you and she goes you have been working diligently all night and you didn't know whose lair you were in no I, well look it's a it's a cruel nickname but i i wear it as much as i can because People fear it, so, but. This is my, oh. I, this is my staff. I'm the, I'm the boss, I'm the leader. This is my, they call me the Gorgon. I start to like look her over and she just looks human. Oh, she is a hundred percent human. Yeah. Oh, um. Oh, 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 you, oh, and then, and then I'm going to have her make an insight check just to make sure, um, but I don't want to like, nah, I'll play it normal. Uh, so yeah, she makes an insight check. Roll it again. Okay. Yeah. She, she looks at you again and she goes, I, I see what happened here. I, I now I understand what you were asking. I, I'm sorry. I if you were looking for others of your your kind. Um yeah. I'm I'm afraid I, I'm afraid that's not what you'll find here. I don't actually know where any real Gorgons are. Um I'm just someone in charge of a lot of people and a lot of pies. And they say that my gaze is very steely and they started calling me the Gorg. And I, I personally, I, I never liked it as a nickname. It's just something that's stuck. And so I've used it. And, um, and, and you don't know anyone um, named, uh, Alexios, with the dad, that's his father's name. Oh, I mean, I know quite a few people named Alexios, but I don't think I know. I oh, no. I don't know an Alexios. If that's what you mean. Oh, okay. No, no. I was just curious. Um, uh, yeah. That okay. Um, if he was also a Gorgon, I do not know him. No, no, no. Not not a Gorgon h human. Um. I don't tend to know men in that way, if that helps you. Um, I think, but you might, oh, oh, okay. Um, okay, oh, wow. Um, well, I'm, I'm glad I was able to help anyway, and uh, um, we can stick around if if there's more help that's needed tomorrow. Oh, oh yes, your more help would be very appreciated. And if you, I, I understand now that maybe you helped out of a different motive. And if, if that's the case, I will no, find a way no, to compensate you for your work. No, I, no, 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 no. I, um, um, I was taught the teachings of Fer, Fer, Ferika and, and that's who I follow. And I am always wanting to use natural medicine to heal. And and I never turn down. Um, I never look away when someone needs help. 
Well, I'm I'm certainly a fan of Farika myself, although I tend to be more of a fan of her poisoning or corrupting side of things, but that's but in a very metaphorical way. I mean, although I have used poison quite a bit as a it is a good method for dealing with people who are problematic, but not not often. I when when required, but so if you are good at making poisons, I would be happy to use your services, but that's neither here nor there. And not tonight. Tonight is of about helping people, so trying to be better. Yeah. Um, well, I'm going to go um, sleep. It's been a long day. Of course. And again, your room is comped, and I will have breakfast sent to you. You and your your satyr friend, I believe her. she was a satyr, and um, the cat... Mm. I don't think she saw. I don't think she saw Callie. I think she would recognize Callie, so I'm gonna assume she did not see Callie. Um, I, that was a uh, me forgetting that the player wasn't here and I, her character was there. <laughs> um, but yeah, I don't think she saw Callie. So yeah, you the room that you were in, I believe I saw a few of you go there. I'll make sure that it's taken care of, and I'll have a full breakfast sent to you because the two of you, you and your Seder friend, did do well. I think she saw Marafine and and Zendar because you both were right on the floor doing things. I think she probably didn't see Callie because Callie was off carrying boxes and stuff like that. So um, that makes more sense. Um, so yeah, so she's like, you and your your, your Seta girlfriend, I don't know, I don't want to assume, I shouldn't, sorry. Um, I the, the two of you were very helpful and I appreciate that. So you will be compensated. I, I look after those who help me. And then she looks at you and she goes, but just to be clear, the same happens for those who cross me. Okay. Um, I'm going to go now. Okay. Have a good rest. And he, like, walks away and gets around the corner and, like, stops. I thought she was the one, but she's not, and that's fine. Um, I'm going to say Dari, Dari kind of slithers up and kind of coils around like your, not your neck, but like around your shoulders, kind of in a way that that he does when wanting to kind of give you like a hug or give you a little bit of like love and, and knows that you, it's like an embrace. The best, in, in the most that a snake can embrace someone, he's embracing you. We'll find it one day. Um, I guess just not today. And he'll walk back in and start to go to bed. There's definitely some sniffles, but he tries to uh, um, make that as silent as possible, and he eventually passes out. Okay. I'm going to say that all of you, you get a full night's rest. So you do get a long rest, um, but all of you are plagued with some sort of interesting dream. I think mm. that Lysandros, yours is not that intense for you. It's it's you see some phoenix masks appear in your dream that you've seen before as he's spoken to you and you you see those three harps that you saw at the court of arrestus when you foil his plan and you definitely see that black cat roaming around a little bit and it's kind of like make a um Make a wisdom check for me, just to see if you're able to like, perceive what all this means together. Okay. Wisdom is one of my very best skills. And by that, I mean I have a negative one, so that's a 14. Okay. Uh, I think you are just kind of seeing it as like, you know there's a connection between whatever happened with Phoenix and this cat and with these monsters rising up, but you can't quite place it all together. You know there's something going on with it. You know that like one event caused the other event, and that's what you that's what you know. Um, Marafine, your dream is you are on a boat and you are looking off into the horizon. And it has a familiar glow to it. And it's the glow of the colors of blue and green. 
And it's almost like an aurora borealis along the horizon. And they are a blue and green shade, which you know to be kind of the colors that are often associated with Krufix, the god of the horizons that you worship. Um, I hope I'm getting that right as a magic. I'm not the magic heavy person. Jordan, is that correct? <laughs> I think so. <laughs> okay, I think I got that right. Okay, so you, the the dancing blue and green kind of form together, and it's very comforting for you because you the horizon is kind of the thing you're always heading towards, the unknown, trying to figure out your solution. And on the boat with you are Lysandros, Zindar, and Callie. So why don't you make a religion check for me? Okay. So it's a nine. Um, you don't quite know for sure what this was trying to convey. You, you can guess if you want to make a guess yourself as a player. I'll be happy to talk you through that, but I think that I'm not going to. As I'm not going to tell you just from the check what it meant. Uh, maybe it's kind of like an event, not adventure, <laughs> but like a like a future, like prophecy. I guess like something that will eventually happen. Okay. And thank you for the tip, Vampire54. <laughs> oh, thank you. So yeah, that might be, we might have a, a toast coming along the way. Uh, yeah. Cool. We'll find out. All right, that is your that is your dream. It is just you sailing towards a horizon with these strangers that you just met tonight. And finally, Zindar, you, you have a bit of a restless sleep. Not enough that you won't get a long rest. I'm not going to make you do that. But you, you're struggling, and you know, as but as you get to that point where you feel like you're not going to fall asleep, suddenly you kind of feel okay, you feel comforted, and you imagine yourself lying wrapped around. There's like a golden serpent that is wrapping itself around you and almost forming a bed around you. And you recognize this serpent feels almost like the serpent that you often see grazing the shoulders of Farika in a lot of art that you've seen of her and a lot of like visages you have of her. And you suddenly feel the ground forming below you and it is the bed that you're in in between this serpent is like a mortar and pestle bowl. Like it's like a bowl for mixing medicine, things like that, but it's soft and it's comforting and it feels warm. And why don't you make a religion check for me at advantage because of your piety? At advantage is only, I mean, I won't say only, but it's a 17. Okay. Well, 17 is pretty good. I, I would say that your overall feeling from this premonition is that Farika is saying to you, I know that you're hurting right now, but it's okay. You're going to be okay. I'm looking <clears throat> out for you. You're on the right path. And that's it. That is, that is your dream. And you needed the, that. <laughs> <laughs> And Callie <laughs> looks like she's fighting something in her dream. Um, she's having that kind of uh, that kind of thing. Um, and you wake up, and it's a little bit later in the morning than you might have normally woken up had the events not transpired. But it's probably around like what would be like waking up at like nine thirty or ten a.m. And you do feel like the the a lot of the wounded are gone. A lot of people have, have been able to get up now because of the hard work, especially of the two healers that were working tirelessly to get people stabilized and healthy, people were able to, to go and you are able to step out of your room. All right. Well, I mean, we've helped a bunch of people now and this is the place we were trying to get. I, I mean, let's go find whatever it is you wanted to find from the Gorgon. I mean, I can make a sort of secondhand introduction. I don't tend to be uh, particularly popular with her, but, um, 
I mean, I can point her out. She was right in the middle of things last night. So, um, I don't, I, I don't think I need to see. Um, I think I was meant to be here for the healing, and um, no, um, uh, I, I'm okay. I don't know if Marfine wants to see them though. Yeah, Marfine, didn't you say you were looking for some sort of like underground gambling gen or something at some point? Yeah, um, I guess I could take a few minutes with um, the Gorgon just to see if they have seen any specific characters around here. Sure. Sounds, um, sounds good okay. to me. Uh, before we go out, let me put my face on real quick. And um, he'll turn and and kind of like do a little thing. And when he turns around, he's kind of a, a slightly buff looking human with like a big bushy mustache. He goes, the name's Aeschylus. <clears throat> and, I, and I just wanted to say, um, I don't know anybody's like insight ability, uh, but he uh, definitely is like stuttering and um, not really wanting to go. <laughs> so uh, if we get close, he's like going to go straight towards healing stuff and not going to even, he won't even be with you. Let me, um, let me see what Callie does that information. Because that might be something I can do to keep her. Mm, yeah, happy. that. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> um, but I'm, I'm gonna, I'm gonna let the dice roll, and I'm not gonna do the DM thing of like it's convenient, so I'm gonna go for it. Uh, let's see what happens here. I think this is really that since you brought that up, it's a fun thing to check out. Yeah, yeah I'm, okay. I'm gonna make a insight roll and see how I feel about if I would notice it. Did I make one too? <laughs> yeah, go for it. You can. Yeah, all of you can. Ooh, I got a 19, so I definitely noticed something is up. <laughs> Callie I got, got a, a six, so Callie didn't notice nothing. <laughs> I got a 13. Okay, what'd you get, Lysandros? I got a, a 19, which is a 21 after modifiers, so. Okay, so yeah, you you get whatever whatever Omega just let you know about. For, yeah, you can tell Zendar is very, like, shaken a little bit. Hey, go. <laughs> He's in our buddy. He, he drops out of his Aeschylus voice, which is like, oh, I'm Aeschylus. And instead, and, and Mara, like, fine, hey. I'll say you get it too. I'll say the two of you both caught it because I think that's a pretty obvious thing that's happening right now. So, okay. Yeah. Look, Zindar, I, I, I've encountered the Gorgon before and I know that she could be pretty intimidating. And I, I don't know what business you have with her, but if, trust me, you're going to be fine. If, if you don't owe her money or anything like that, you don't need to worry about it. She's. Uh, dangerous, but usually pretty fair. Um, no, um, I, he just kind of like runs off. Huh. What did, what uh, did you say to him? I said, what, what did you do? What? I, I didn't do anything. I, I, I was trying to be empathetic. Look, g g g let the man have his secrets, I guess. Uh I'll go find him, make sure he's okay, and then she goes running off after Zendar. You can tell that he just went to uh, if she once Kale finds him, he's tending to someone, getting his mind off of it. Okay, I think she is. She's not like the most talker. She's not the most like active listener. Um, but I think she just like remains around you and is helping you with any any objects you need like she gives things to you and you can tell it's like her attempt at like reaching out and being close and like offering you comfort but she doesn't quite know what she's doing so, back. yeah let's go let's cut back to marfine yep. and uh lysandros back with marfine and lysandros lysandros gets back and the character's like all right best friend let's go find this gorgon and find what information they need. I love that you're still calling her best friend, even as Aeschylus. <laughs> well, for, it's just true, you know? <laughs> right. And I'm going to ignore the best friend thing, but yeah, I think uh, <laughs> we can go and see. Great. So, uh, I, think, I think she's about where she was last night. I think that even though things are settling down, she's still pretty much in charge of things, so she's looking around for stuff. And she's like still making sure people join our things. Okay. And then I get I go up to her and then I ask, um, is there anything else you guys need any help with? 
Um, you did quite a lot yourself, and I, I don't think that I have any need for, for any more work. But uh, if you want to keep healing people, I, don't, I think everyone is probably healed beyond the need for magic at this point. But if you want to apply bandages or such, then that is fine. But you know, you've done more than enough. So if there's anything I can do for you, I would I would appreciate. I would be happy to. I don't like to be in debt to people, so I would be happy to return. Oh, behind. it's not that bad, but I mean, we're just here to to help out however we can, honestly. Well, that's the name's Aeschylus. It's nice to meet you. I'm new in town, and uh, I don't know anyone who's here. Uh, make a stealth check for a deception check for me, Lysandros, because of the detail of your. Did you use your Phoenix? Thing, or did you use actual disguise self? Oh, I used my Phoenix one. It more fun okay. that way. But I'm good at deception, so let's yeah. see. Ho ho! That's a natural <laughs> one. <laughs> okay. I go. I, I think don't know she... anyone here, and that's a good-looking guy over on the wall over there. <laughs> I look at the poster of <laughs> or the like. Do not let gamble poster. Yeah, I think she doesn't respond right away. I think she just looks at you. And she kind of like looks back to Marfheim. Like I said, I don't like to be in debt. So if there's if there's something that I can help you with, I would be happy to clear you off my ledger. Okay. Um, I there is one thing. Is are any sort of groups of Minotaurs around hang around here or anything? Well, <laughs> Lots of people hang around here. It's it's a gambling den. It tends to be what it's for. Um, but yes, we do get minotaurs from time to time. And like most beings, there are rougher minotaurs and nicer minotaurs. So, How often do they come here? I don't really have a schedule for them. I think right this time of year, they would probably... The ones that tend to come in here are... The rougher kind, at least, are probably up up north, closer to Akros and their their own cities. The Minotaur. Oh. Those Minotaurs countries. can be stronger than than us humans. That's for sure. She just kind of like lets this happen, <laughs> and then she yeah, she just kind of yep. This is uh, the worst performance Lysandros has ever given. Oh, a hundred percent. It's great. Yeah. <laughs> I and, uh, the towns. and then I know I notice what Lysandros is trying to do. Do I? Uh, I think you definitely do because he okay. rolled one on his deception check. So even okay. you're like, what is that? Uh, oh, she goes, uh, Phoboros and Scophos are the two like uh, Minotaur land areas. There's like Badlands and, and there's also like a society. So you know there's like a rougher area of minotaurs and there's also like a little more societal ones and there's also like you tend to know i, I would think that even investing minotaurs long enough from looking at them that i'm not even gonna make you roll for knowledge of this i think you know that minotaurs who tend to live in the more human populated towns tend to be a little more like assimilated into those cultures um whereas the ones in kind of like in the badlands and in their labyrinths and stuff like that tend to be a little bit more like of the more like rougher variety and they kind of have a little more isolationist vibes and things like that. Okay. Um, but I notice what Lysandros is doing and then I can look on the wall and then I ask her, um, could I trouble you with another favor? Sure. You see that guy's photo on the wall? Yes, I'm well aware of. And she looks at the guy talking and says, Lysandros. And then she looks right back at you. <laughs> Good name for a handsome bastard. <laughs> One of those words is very true. Um, what is What can I do for you involving Lysandros? Uh, do you know him? I, don't, I didn't want to assume. There are a lot of satyrs in the world. Yeah, as much as it pains me to say these words... Would we, by chance, be able to wipe his debt? Well, I'm sure that a friend of Lysandros would know that he isn't 
doesn't owe a debt. In fact, I had to pay him a large sum of money, and it actually devastated my work for quite a while. So we're even. I just find him obnoxious. So mm. when I get the chance, I tend to like to mess with him a little bit. I see. So he's... She looks, and she looks back at Aeschylus again, and she goes, so he's not necessarily going to meet the end of a blade in my presence, but any town that I have influence in may be less friendly to him than he thinks they might be. And then she huh. looks back at you again. <laughs> well, I'd hate to be him. Good thing I'm not. Well, that's a shame, because if Lysandros was here, I would maybe offer him a job to get me back on my good graces, but I guess if he wants to continue traveling loosely and doing whatever repayments that he seems to have for all the debtors that he knows, then he can continue to do that. Yeah, oh, well, who knows the motivation of people who aren't in the room, am I right? You are correct. Uh, <laughs> now, if you're done, this was, sorry. I was going to say that I look at Lysandros with the look like you had your chance. <laughs> <laughs> but but that's it. Okay. Um, she says, well, if you ever find your way in Neolantin or Melitus, I'm usually in one of the two. So you are you. And she like very pointedly says it like you as opposed to like both of you. You are welcome in my dens anytime you wish. Thank you. I appreciate it. I appreciate you. And I don't know where your friend went, but he seemed rather upset after we spoke, so I do hope that he's doing better. You spoke to Zed Zendar? Oh, well, did he not share that with you? No. Oh, well, then it probably is not mine to say, and I will take my leave of that conversation now. Sorry, that was me ending the conversation. <laughs> yeah, like, if, if you're both still there, she's like, I'm going to walk away now. Goodbye, <laughs> Mara Fine. I'm leaving. <laughs> Escalus. And then she goes off to do well, whatever she's doing. I should probably go soon, too. My uh, my successful pottery business is uh, is out there <laughs> and waiting for me to take over. Escalus, the potter. Ask her out. She Everyone goes, knows Look, me. It, it is long since stopped being amusing. And then she walks away from you. <laughs> <laughs> hmm. I wonder what she was talking about. <laughs> I think she noticed. What? No way. You think she saw through Aeschylus? Mm hmm. That was like the best face I've put on in a long time. It wasn't. Trust me. I've been. What? Uh, okay. <laughs> well, clearly you're no expert in these things, but uh, let me tell you, she bought it hook, line, and sinker. Hey. It was really nice of you to try and get my debt erased. I mean, yeah, you managed and to you pick messed the... it up. Well, I, I'm sorry, but look, you managed to pick the one person who I'm not in debt to, and it was a huge problem that I wasn't in debt to them. But the fact that you tried, that means a lot. I think yeah. we've really formed a bond. Well, look, you helped me with the scarf, so I guess I owed you a favor. And I don't really pay attention to when you talk, so I don't know who's the right person of when to debt or whatever. I just thought I'd ask. Well, let me just say that in general, if you throw a rock and you hit somebody, I'm probably in debt to them. But this one time, it's not the case. You have an infatuation with the uh, rocks. Uh, it anyway. Yeah. Where's Zadner? That's a pretty recent thing, actually. I don't know what the rock thing has happened, but <laughs> you know what? I'm not one to like buck trends that just sort of, you know, fall into my. Yeah, where did he go? And wait, she said he talked to her already. Yeah, we should maybe probably go why, check. Yeah, maybe that's why he seemed off this morning. Yeah, um, a little bit, because I know he was looking forward to seeing the organ. And as you go looking for Zindar and Callie, uh, a someone coming, stumbling in, thinking the gambling dens are open, comes walking in, carrying an, a morning, a little uh, 
morning hair the dog shaking a goblet around of wine and and they're yelling out uh Fun cinematic scene with Callie, always conveniently behind big boxes every time the Gorgon looked at her. This is all my <laughs> god's toasted head cannon. And everyone's <laughs> like, oh, Vampire 54, you and your godly <laughs> reveals. And that is a toast from our, our Vampire 54. Thank you so much for the toast. Cheers. Cheers. Um, yeah, and you come back to, to Callie and Zindar, who have now, I think, stabilized the last patient that needed it. And they are, uh, they're doing okay. Things are all right. Good work there. Good work there, everyone. And Cal was like, so did you find what you needed? To, oh, to Mara, well. Mara fine. Oh, <laughs> I was like, who? Yeah. Uh, I didn't exactly find what I needed, but I have I had some more intel. That's good. I'm I'm also a pretty good bounty hunter, so if you need me to like look for somebody specific, I can probably help you. Okay. I don't know exactly who I'm looking for. I just know what I'm looking for. But okay, I'll, well, keep, I'll keep that in mind. Sounds good. Um, and then uh, do you make your way out of the den? Do you head back to town? Or what do you all do now? Yeah. Uh, I mean, at least in our heads out. Um, okay. No need to be here anymore. All right. Um, I think that as you leave and you get back up to like as you pass by the docks again, you see that same black cat kind of walking around, kind of pacing, uh, looking like impatiently, pa in a way that a, only a cat can really look is impatient. Almost like, like the way a cat looks when you're supposed to be feeding it and you're not, but like, it's not meowing, it, like it's not looking for food. It's kind of like, L yeah. Lysandros goes and points at the cat and goes, see, what did I tell you? This cat was going to find us one way or the other. I know how God stuff works. If you know how it works, why is it here? Well, okay. I don't know the specifics of what they are trying to get out of me. Uh, I just know that it's going to happen if the gods will it so. Out of you? So this cat is yours? No. Yeah, I just assume it's probably trying to get me to do something. And because you guys are hanging out with me, it's probably also trying to get you guys to do something. Or it could be vice versa, and it's trying to get you to do... Trust me, it's just God stuff. Let's just go with it, right? Zindar is going to get down on a knee um, and take out, like, a piece of ration or something and, like, hold it out to the cat. Um, the cat looks at it, and it takes it and seems to enjoy it, but in the same way that Dari does as a familiar. So you realize, like, like Dari will probably eat treats if you give it to Dari, but you also don't have that feeling like you have to feed Dari on a regular basis. Like, it's not, it's like that. Mm. And I'll say that you get just a, like, a slight tinkle of, I think because you have a familiar, you you recognize as you get close to it. I'm not going to make you roll for it, because I think you, you have a familiar, you know what it's like to have a familiar. You get the sense, like, this is not a mortal cat this and you kind of get that anyway because it's disappeared behind poles and stuff a few times yeah you get that this is somebody's familiar or this is a spiritual connection to somebody okay and then i'll just oh and i'll like look up at lysandros marfine and um sorry are we is marfine or marfine i keep wanting to say both and i know you said either or but i want to make sure i'm saying it uh, the way you and Fine, thank you. Okay. <laughs> uh, I knew it. I was like, I know this. Still. Yeah, I did it wrong the first episode, so I've been making sure to do it right ever since then. Uh, looking up at Marfa and Lysandros and Callie, it's it's like it's like Dari and Snake. Just... I told you, God stuff. Callie says she belongs to the sage that lives in Melitus. Lysandros just points at Callie and is like, um. Well, you all came with me to the the girl, the lady, and um, and I, if you want, I, I don't think this uh, this cat, this from this spirit, um, is here on vacation. Yeah, well, 
I mean, if it wants us to go to Melitus, I don't know if I've got time. That's like a, a good ways away. Cat, where are you trying to get us to go? And it turns its head and looks at you. And it's kind of like, how do you not get this? And it's like uh, heading towards... Um, I think it starts walking towards the docks a little bit. Well, let's go. All right. If you if you're all gonna follow it, uh, I think it heads to the docks, and there is a a boat that is being. It's a small um, little, just like small vessel, like a keelboat size. Not very big. Um, has a little like tent like structure on the back for someone to live in has a mast and a small little under under deck uh, spot, but otherwise looks pretty unassuming and uh, has a figure of a woman on its, on its uh, masthead maidenhead. Is that what it's called? Um, and it's kind of there and someone's loading some materials onto it. And Does it want us to get on the boat? Um, the cat goes towards the boat and then kind of like disappears behind a post on a dock and is gone again. And then you see a young woman who is loading up the dock and she turns and Lysandros and Callie recognize her immediately as um, Celipso, the Nyxborn who you freed from being basically captured by three hags on the island during your musical episode, uh, during our Trevor Project fundraiser. And she goes, <laughs> what are you guys doing here? Hey, how's it going? It's going good. I've been free for like six months. I've been like sailing the world and doing stuff. I'm no longer on that island. No, no more longer on Polikari. Stuff. Oh, I, I mean, I still sing, but like of my own choice and people don't sing around. Me. Well, people do hear music when I'm sleeping. Um, but that's it. Yeah, well, everyone's got little quirks, I guess. So that seems you, basically normal. What do you do? You need to do you need to go somewhere? I have I'm at a dock. I have a boat. I can take you somewhere. Do you need to go somewhere? I don't know. Where are you going? <sighs> Wherever the horizon takes me. <laughs> I mean, look. You know how this. So we uh, followed a cat here. And uh, it headed towards your boat, and then it uh, it disappeared, so. Well, that sounds okay. like you're supposed to come to me, then. Yeah, well, oh, by the way, uh, this is Indar, and this is Marfine. Uh, they're, they're new friends. Hi, new friends. What happened to your centaur friend and the other lady? Yeah, he went off on his centaurs, and just kind of doing that. Oh, okay. And, uh, yeah, and, and D... D what did how did D part with us? I Can I give that. player disadvantage for that pun? <laughs> <laughs> that is that is actually the other player's pun of the character that he made. So I won't... I'm giving him a pun, and well, I know who it is. I'll find him. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, um, D. You don't really know what happened to D. Lysandros. Like she kind of she kind of went off and did her own thing. It, it wasn't like a disappearance. She kind of just like peeled off. You, you all kind of parted ways a little bit, and then you kind of kept finding your way to Callie to feel safe around her, but D, some, it seemed like somebody approached D after the island, and then she kind of like started getting a little bit quiet and weird, and then kind of disappeared a bit, a little bit after a while. And that's why Callie was curious to try to find her, which thought the, the bounty was for her. Yeah, I, I'm not really sure what happened to D. I mean, you know, people come and they go, and Okay, well, um, just sort of how things work. Well, you you helped me, and this boat is my boat. It's my family's boat. It's been in my family for generations. And so, if you, and I just kind of, you know, I, my family are we're big Fossa worshippers, so we just love being on the sea. So, if you want to come with me, yeah, come on. We'll go. We'll go where you where you want to go. Acros, Miletus. Where do you want to go? My Sandros turns to Zendar and Mar and is like, hmm? Uh I mean well, I know you that all know this cat. 
I mean, last time I saw that cat, it was in Melitus. The cat. Well, um, uh, question. Um, um, sorry, I I did not get your name. I'm sorry. Say Lipso. Say Lipso. I used to be um, bound to an island, and I was controlled by three hags who sang a lot. But they, but then this Les Andrews and Callie and their friends helped me. We broke the island. Okay. Um. Um. What's Melitus like? I don't think I've been there before. I don't think he has. Um, it's a big city. I don't like to hang out there myself for too long because it's a little bit too much dry landy for me. But it's a big city and there's lots of people. There are lots of folks of all different kinds, and there are you know everyone of all different shapes and sizes. So it's it's a nice place. It's fun. Um, it's out of character. It's essentially the Athens of Theros. So it's like a much. It's a very democratic, very like opulent, and it's it's like that kind of city. Whereas Akros is like the uh, Sparta. Gotcha. That makes mm-hmm. sense. Um, are there um, a lot of non-humanoid people? Oh yeah, there's lots. There's minotaurs. There's centaurs. There's there's. Uh, uh, I, I, <laughs> uh, mar uh, Marfine. <laughs> Marfine realized you said minotaurs and then realized that she's looking at the boat and then remembers the dream that she had and says we have to get on this boat I can't explain why but we have to get on this boat Uh, okay okay Okay. Yeah, you all <laughs> you all get on the boat and uh, say Lipso goes. Okay, where are we headed? Melitus? Does that seem you said Melitus? Something about a cat? Uh, I I think yeah, Melit Melitus. Sounds good to me. Okay, great. And so yeah, she she loads up the boat and you can see her loading some cargo, which may or may not be stuff she's smuggling. You don't know. But she uh, she gets it all loaded in, and then she starts uh, heading up north. And I'd say it takes about a day or so to get up there. Um, and Callie, I don't think Callie likes the water too much, if I recall correctly. So I think she kind of stays kind of close to the mast. And you see a lot of um, a lot of marks and symbols in the mast, as if like the girl she you said her family's had it for generations. So you see lots of like families markings that are in the mast and all over the boat and stuff like that. And yeah, so you have a little bit of time to get used to it, and it it takes less time than you think it would, and that's not uncommon in Theros. Theros is a plane that is mythological in nature, and so a lot of times the world is bigger or smaller than it needs to be at a given time. So what feels like it might have taken several days or a week's journey takes just a day or two. It's actually pretty quick. You just have very good smooth sailing, good winds, sun is out, shining. Um during this time, um I definitely would have since we have the time, I would have uh looked into the the residual water elemental liquid, mm-hmm. the glowing liquid. Um just to see what he can ascertain, because that's what he does. He researches new things. Um, so he'll start doing the process of looking at it physically, looking at it magically, all these mm-hmm. things, just figure out what it might be. I'll Identifying say in, it. Yeah. Um, let me get back to you. If you're going to do identify on it, let me get back to you on what it actually is as far as that's concerned. But I that's will valid. say that you're, you're able to ascertain that it is definitely magical in nature because it is a piece of like a, a, you know that this like will essentially function as some sort of potion, but you don't know for sure what it was. It feels a little bit beyond the realm of an identify spell. It feels like it's older than that. It feels like it's maybe beyond the little bits of the world that you're familiar with or something you've directly encountered before. It feels ancient. You're giving him a quest. 
I hope you know this. I do know uh, this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. Cause you, I think during the boat ride, you would even hear if anybody speaks um, draconic in any way, shape, or form, you'll hear definitely a fuck um, <laughs> in that language. <laughs> At some point, and his hair is down, kind of frazzled, it's moving a little more than usual, as he cannot figure out what this thing is. Uh. Yeah, it's, it's really frustrating. Like, it feels <laughs> like you should be able to get it. It's, like, right on the tip of something, and you just can't quite make it out. It's You know what? It, it's all in the day's work. Uh, yeah, and I'm giving you an advantage for the draconic fuck, because that was very funny to me. So I'm giving you, I'm giving you inspiration, I mean. Um, I'd have <laughs> Thanks. Um, yeah. So yeah, the, the trip is relatively smooth. And do any of you want to have a chance to talk amongst yourselves? I mean, we've had a lot of that this episode, but if you want to keep doing it, we definitely can. Or, or are you still a little like uh, reserved uh, around each other? Or I think during the, before he gets a little frazzled, um, I think he would ask as he's like, you see him like with a bottle, with the bottle of the glowing liquid, like, you see like different like tools out and he's like testing things and stuff, but he's uh looks over at uh Marfine. Um you seemed really um uh excited to get on this boat. Have you been to Melitis before? I have not. <laughs> like I don't think I have. Um but no I haven't. I just the other day I had a dream and it was all of us on a boat. And I wanted, and I'm just assuming that we are meant to be on this boat. So I had, I had to, we, we had to go. Cause there would have been no other way, reason of why I, I had a dream like that. Do you have a lot of dreams like that? It sounds prophetic. Uh, not very often, but. What I do, I try to, you know, run with it. Well, I wasn't really expecting to find people like, you know, traveling companions or anything like that. Um, but it seems like we could all help each other out in the things that we have to do. So if you want uh, one second. Ah! Okay, I was trying to open it and I couldn't do it, and I finally did. <laughs> um, um, <laughs> once um, we get to Melitus, we can um, uh, figure stuff out from there. Sounds good. I'm happy to have you here. I'm happy to have you here. You all here, I think. Yeah. I don't have many friends, so sorry. This is... Um, a little socially awkward at times. Clarification: Am I here for this conversation? You can be if you want to walk up to it. Yeah. I, you when you when you dropped out, I asked if they wanted to have any conversations on the boat on the way to Melitus, and so uh, Omega gets a as a in character. So yeah, I'll, I'll I'll just, just, I was saying, yeah, um, I'm. He's trying to open up his bottle, and he finally did. Where he's trying to identify it, so it's kind of gets lacked. So he can be. It's up to him. I, I'll just say I was I was off doing something else at, at the moment. I just wasn't sure. Okay, yeah, totally. Um, I think you arrive safely in Melitus, and uh, Salip so um, is like, well, I appreciate, I mean, I'm, I'm happy to have given you a ride. If you ever need me, I'm around. I'm happy to do it again. But I do have business that I have to attend to, and uh, if I don't do it soon, I may lose a lot of money. So I'm going to let you all go and do your thing, and please don't ask me questions or tell anybody that you saw me. Thank you. And then she... Uh, mm -hmm takes the cargo that she was loading and she rushes off to do something with it. So, All right. Those all sound like very reasonable requests. So, uh, anybody see a cat around anywhere? Callie's like, well, we're here now. We know where the house is. Why don't we just go? That's fair. <laughs> I guess we do actually know where we're trying to go now. Yeah. So, uh, I thought about having the cat lead you there. I'm like, all right, I'm not going to railroad you that badly. I'm just going to have a character. Let's just go to the house. Like, That's All right. Valid. Well, welcome to Melitus. It's a pretty cool place. 
Um, do I still have the image of Militus on Roll20? Let me see here. Um, I do not right now, but we'll get to it. I'll show you eventually. But it's basically there. It is a so you're coming into a you came into a massive harbor, and it is it is very much the marbled visage of like a classic Greek city. Um, the artwork shows it all being like white marble, but I as a actual knowledgeable person about ancient Greece. Uh, I'm, I'm furious that they tried to say that it was all actually white marble because that's that's bleaching over time. And that's that's what historians trying to make things look the way that they, they think looks nice and clean. Actual ancient Greek statues were gaudy as hell. It came up last night on my other show as well. They were colorful, they were bright, they were vibrant. It was super queer and I am celebrating that. So it is a very bright, <laughs> colorful city. It is not white marble statues. It is colorful, gaudy, gauche it is delightful it's campy as hell and there are two giant statues that are like centuries standing over the bay of melitus and uh legend of the city has it that they were warring kings who conquered the city together but the real truth of the characters this is actually a magic canon is they were a married couple that founded the city together and these two men that built the city and so i'm gonna say that in my theros everyone knows that because i don't like having erased queer history in my in my theros so that's my soapbox moment so there we go uh as Meletus, explained on the cards kaneos and tiro of Miletus. there you go uh Excellent. So you, uh, that is good information to have. So, uh, yeah, you find your way up to the familiar villa of Kia the Sage. It is daytime. I actually made two versions of this map in case you came at nighttime or daytime. Um, and yeah, you come in. Uh, by the way, I, I believe that I got this. I did have a credit for this map person and I can't remember who it is on top of my head. I will have to look it up and find it so I can tweet it out because I do want to credit my map makers. Um, let me uh, figure that out. Um, Dom, if you want to scroll down a little bit on your display there. Um, okay. Um, yeah. So you find your way coming up this familiar courtyard. Let me put your characters in here. Dom may have to give some reason whenever I drop uh, Zindar. You seem to not be able to control him. We probably won't do a lot with the map right now. Let's just kind of give you an idea what it is. It's a big open air villa that overlooks the, the sea. You had to kind of go up a hill to get to it. And once you get in there, there are cats everywhere. There are cats crawling over things, jumping on things, playing with stuff. There are also scrolls everywhere. There are documents. There are, th this is like an info junkie's home, like a lot. Like she just, you can tell that she's voraciously pouring over documents every moment that she can. And there's inks. There's like spots of that everywhere. There are lots of different uh, tools for like augury and other types of divination. And there are also lots of like weaving looms lying around as well. And often and there's like a, there's a fine gray thread through all of them, almost like the gray hair of Clothis, the God of fate and destiny and things like that. And standing in the courtyard, looking at you, let me make your, your characters regular size instead of, four times as big as everybody else. Um, standing in the middle of the courtyard for those who have never seen her before is a skinny gray salt and pepper haired woman wearing a very fine like tunic that is it's got like the loot kind of the toga like structure has a little bit of a greenish like cloak over her um, and she has her hair is covering her ears a little bit and she's very pale and she is standing next to a very very familiar black cat and she looks at you and she goes look i sent the cat like four times i i had you fought. how did it take you this long to figure out to come here well, I, I mean, we got here eventually, uh, right? These, these two I don't blame. I, you're new. Hello. Welcome to my home. I am Kia. This is, obviously, this is Arthur, my cat. And 
there are lots of other cats around. They're all, they have lots of names. I'll introduce you to all of them later if you want to know them, but I can't believe how long it took you to get here. Hey, I, I mean, look, I, I'm not the sort who can be, you know, just like called and I, I just show up, you know? I got things to do. I got people yes. who are trying to like hurt me most of the time. So I can't both just like things. go. <laughs> she goes, both those things are true about why I called you. We talked oh. about this. We talked about what happened with with your god when he tried to usurp my god and distracted her. And okay, sorry. Your friends don't know what's happening. Let me calm down. I'm normally very collected. I just, it's been a couple of days and I've gotten a little impatient. Um, hello again. My name is Kia and you are? I'm Mer Zindar. Ooh. Oh. <laughs> Marafine. Yes. Was I right? Was I right? Did I say it right? Yes. Good. Um, come in, come in, come on in. And she leads you into a kitchen area, like a little eating area that has a table, and she has laid out um what is what is Zindar's favorite food? Oh. Uh ooh. He likes spicy food. Okay. She he has likes a very spicy meats. Mm. Okay. She has a very <laughs> spicy kind of like a donor or like a like a bureau-ish type item. It's like a, it's a very spicy pork mixed with with a meat, with a beef and lamb kind of vibe. Um it's it's got a little bit of a kick to it. And uh, I can't remember how to pronounce it, the spice with the H, the Haruska is that how it's pronounced. Um that is <clears throat> all over it. It is so good. Um, she's ready for you. What is Marafine's, uh, Marafine's favorite food? <laughs> I was trying to think of my actual favorite food and what will actually work. It. <laughs> uh, whatever. It's, it's a fancy world. Whatever, whatever you like is what's there. So just tell me what your favorite food is. <laughs> <laughs> Either sushi or pizza. Uh, we'll say sushi. Uh, it's a, it's a, yes, Harissa. That's what it's called. Thank you, DJ Regular. Um, it is, I'll say that it's, you know, it's Mediterranean and it's a seafood area. So I think either one of those, I think she has a flatbread that she has made for you that has like a really nice, like a tuna, like a vibe to it. It's very, it's whatever the mix is there. It's like a, it's like a salted fish and it's quite tasty as well. Um, Lysandros, what's your favorite food? Oh man, Lysandros doesn't, Lysandros can't be like tied down to a single favorite food, but uh, anything that's like- I think she just know, has a glass of wine for Lysandros so she just sets down. That's what I was gonna say. Yep. <laughs> he drinks um, his breakfast. Yeah, and I think for Callie, she probably has a nice cooked meat, like a very, like a big, like hunk of like lamb or beef that's just like been on a spit for a while. And she's like, well, at least I know when you're coming. Um, and then she looks and she says, so I understand you already faced some arrivals. Uh, yeah, and I don't really know what, well, um, it was big. Is more stuff like that gonna happen? Uh, I'm afraid so. Um, let me just quickly catch the two of you up and, and maybe Callie and, and Lysandros as well. I don't know. I don't know how familiar you all are with the history of the Pantheon of Gods in Theros, but the gods who are here now were not always the gods that were here. There were other gods that came before. There were there were Titans. And they were chaotic, and they were—they weren't as refined as the things that mortals are interested in now. There wasn't cities. There wasn't, you know, medicine. There wasn't, you know, like death. There was death at some point, Callie, but that's about it. And then there were newer gods as as things formed. There were gods like my my lady Clothis. There were gods like your deity, Marifine, um, Krufix, the god of horizon, the god of fate. They kind of ushered in a new era, but there were battles between the gods and the beings that were here before. And there were, there were very powerful beings called archons that once dominated the mortals 
and they claimed they were protecting the humans and the other weaker beings from giants and other types of monsters, but they were tyrants. And they controlled much of the world and there were wars amongst the gods and the immortals. And many of these beings were locked away by my mistress in a realm deep, deep in the underworld. And she has kept a vigilant watch over them for millennia now. But the actions of Phoenix attempting to usurp her power, following the actions of your relative, a lot of people you care about, Lysandros, as it turns out. Um, you're all familiar in this world at this point because it wasn't. It was in your lifetime. There was a uprising of a um, of a. Why am I blanking on his name? Of a um, uh, Zinagos. Yes, Zinagos. There was a satyr who tried. To, he was a for he was a satyr who had left Theros and like traveled to other planes of existence. Came back, tried to usurp the power of the gods and become a god himself. Uh, he tried to become the god of revels, the god of partying, but he, and he did succeeded. So, he did <laughs> succeed, but uh, did so by partying, quote unquote, with like demons attacking the place and doing a lot of chaos and a lot of damage. So this is all like recent history for all of you. It's happened within a generation. It's probably maybe about ten years ago at this point, and it is. It was a nightmare situation, but then it got under control, and he was defeated and dethroned, and no longer is a god and was destroyed by demigods. That's all history that's recently has happened um between the rise of xenagos and the most recent aberration from phoenix my lady's yeah. gaze was turned away long enough for some of these archons and these titan beings to escape from there as as she mentioned xenagos lysandro sort of like takes his dice out and like tosses them a little bit and just sort of Looks a, a little less uh, jaunty than he normally does. Yeah, no, things have been uh, torn up a little bit, that's for sure. But isn't that kind of the nature of things with, with gods and mortals and the, the comings and goings of heroes and myths? And Am I reading it wrong? It is exactly the nature of those things, Lysandros, and you are correct. And she goes, and that's why it was so important that I bring you all here now. And then almost like as if exactly when you all have finished your food, she like throws her hand across the table and like knocks all the plates and everything off of it and throws down a massive scroll and unfurls it. And I need everybody here except for Zindar to make a constitution saving throw. Including Callie, actually. Let me make one for Callie. Callie's a little bit different here, too, but I will get to that in a second. Oops, I did it twice. <laughs> oh, I got a 12. Oh, I got to do the save one. Hold on. Yeah, do a save, not a check. What'd you get, Lysandros? 12. Okay. And what did Marfine get? Uh. 18? Okay. You are able to remain standing, but you feel very dizzy, Marafine. Lysandros, you actually feel so dizzy that you kind of fall onto the ground. Um, you're not hurt, but when she unfurls this scroll, there is text on it that is so archaic, so powerful, that it's like your brain can't quite comprehend it you are just like struggling to understand it and callie you can't like the two of you marafine and lysandros you cannot make out a word of what is on this it is like it is like gibberish text it is like it's like moving it's almost like watching like just text fly by really fast and you're not able to break out any words for it and if you did like you could not comprehend it um callie can understand it, but she still feels nauseous, like her body can't quite handle it. But Zindar, you have no trouble 
reading this. You, it makes perfect sense to you and you don't feel any effect on your body from reading it. And what you understand looking at it is that this is celestial. This is the language of the gods themselves on Pharos. And that for some reason you can read and understand celestial. I think you've studied it a little bit, but normally the language of the gods is so magical and so infused with this divine energy that mortals can't really read it when it's in this form. But you find yourself able to, because you already speak it, you find yourself for some reason able to withstand the kind of like overwhelming nature of it. And then uh, Kia hands out tea to all of you that helps like comfort you, helps helps settle you, helps settle your stomach, helps you kind of get over these wheezy effects that you had. She gives the tea to Zindar as well, but he does not need it to settle his stomach. Honestly, I don't, I don't think he realizes, excuse me, that he realized that he's being handed something because he's just staring at this map and gets reading it, even like saying words out loud mm -hmm. uh, as he just goes over it. Yeah, and what you are seeing and she starts to say it out loud to everybody else. She, when she hands the tea to each of the, of the party members, she hands a, a, a cup of tea to Callie and she says, the claw. And then she hands a tea to Mara Fine and she says, the seeker. And then she hands a tea to Lysandros and says, the trickster. And then comes back to you, Xandar, and says, the healer. Four mortal beings of, and she says mortal and kind of like nods to Lysandros a little bit when she says it because of your nature, give or take, who by some strange providence are brought together. This is a tale that we've heard hundreds, thousands of times in this world and others. I'm myself am from how do I say this in a way that you'll understand it? An island, let's say, far, far beyond the borders of the sea. In a city, a polis known as Ravnica, where I met friends and I was thrust into an adventure that's had epic proportions that I was not prepared for. But my my story is not your story, so I will leave it there. But I know what it means to have this strange quest thrown at you. But I know that it is all of you that is supposed to be here. The gods can't defeat these archons and titans because their power exists from a time before the gods did. But the four of you can, and the four of you have to. Uh, and then, oh, sorry. That kind of like shakes him out. Um, I'm sorry. What? We, we can't. I'm. I'm. How? How can we stop? Things older than God. I'm glad you asked that question, Sindar. I'm not. Yeah, you might not be by the time I'm done telling you. Well, How would you defeat something older than a god? I'll tell you. And she leans in and she says, with weapons that are also older than the gods. And that's where we're going to end tonight's session. Nice. Lysandros downs his drink. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that's it. That's that's the end of the session. We're there. We're uh, mm, all right. <laughs> Good. I love that. That's a good beat. Um, <laughs> yeah, we are setting up our fun ancient Greek uh labors of heroes um oh oh i did want to tell you all uh and i'll tell i'll tell ashwin this as well you all leveled up uh to level <coughs> seven level yeah level seven 
Uh, you were six. You level level seven because you fought a wa a giant water elemental, and uh, it's it, you you fought essentially an archon. So uh, I'm le leveling you up to level seven. Uh, so you'll start next episode at level seven. So after that long rest that you got at the the uh, Titans, the Gorgon's Lair, you leveled up, and we will see what this quest that you have before you entails for this season. Um, before we go, I have a couple things to say. I want to make sure I credit the person who made this um, map. Let me try to find that. While, while I look for the the credit of who made the map, uh, please uh, go around the horn and tell everybody where they can find you. Uh, let's just go. We'll go Jordan, Omega, and Joy. So I'll go in that order, and I'll do that while I look for the map maker if I can find it. All right, everybody. Hello again. I'm Jordan Pridgen, and you can find me on Twitter at Jordan Pigeon. And uh, otherwise, most of what you can find me is stuff that I've done previously here on Saving Throw Show. So go check out Wild Cards. Uh, that was one of that was our Savage World show, which was very fun. We have like three different uh, campaigns of that, and a bunch of little like mini sods and stuff like that, and uh, a bunch of the other stuff back there. It's all good, fun stuff. That's me. Uh, hi, my name is Omega Jones, also known as the Critical Bard. Again, Critical Bard across all social media channels. Uh, active work with Hamas Incarnate, doing way too much. I want to shout out that tomorrow for Gen Con, I'm going to be playing some stuff with Saving Throw Show Woo. in the morning, really early, and I have to get up. <laughs> um, <laughs> uh, I'm going to be playing um, uh, a Mysterium RPG uh, using the Savage World uh, system. Um, as a uh, GM by uh, Megan, Meg, 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 yes, Megan yep, Caves. Caves. I was going to say Graves and knew that was not it. <laughs> um, uh, it was a really fun cast. I'm very excited. I've never played this uh, setting before, uh, and I can't wait to play a paranormal investigator. Uh, get your tickets. Yes, they are free. Uh, it's going to be a good, good, good old time. Uh, I'm sure there'll be more information on that in the chat. Uh, and yeah, um, gets me many places throughout the week. Is look at my socials, um, especially for a really cool announcement that I'm going to be able to say very soon. Uh, I mean, I could say it now, but I'm not going to. Uh, so yeah, that's that. That's me. And Joy. Hi, I'm Curious Joy, and you can find me here on Twitch and every other social media. It's Curious Joy. I stole it everywhere. <laughs> 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 All right. And I am Riley Silverman and you can find me on uh, Twitter as Riley J Silverman and on Instagram as Riley Silverman. And uh, this coming Friday night, uh, heartbeats is starting season two on uh, twitch.tv slash Ripley improv. And you can check that out. That's going to be season two. I actually got upgraded from a guest star to series regular this season, so my character, Dr. Lee, Dr. Ashley Love, will be returning at some point along the line. Also, my improvised Doctor Who, uh, improvised, my Doctor Who RPG, where I play the Doctor, Theme of Rastalon, is available in podcast form, and I also believe that finally we're getting to the uh, first episode dropping soon of my scripted Vampire the Masquerade uh, po uh, podcast that I was I was a voice for, uh, Port Saga. So check out Port Saga on your podcasting apps. Uh, I just want to remind again what... Uh, uh, what Omega just said about the Mysterium show at Gen Con. That was actually our end of the show reminder, so I'm glad that they already got to that. So that's there, but just use that Gen Con code to get this information. Check out Megan's show. It's it's delightful, and you have a great, great player, great DM. It's going to be very, very fun to have that check out. Um, I had one more thing. Oh, check out a uh, friend of the channel and also cast member on the channel. Uh, Terry Gamble is on this season of nailed it on Netflix. So check oh. that out. Uh, she was an episode, I think it's the finale of the season. And so we're very, very, very happy for, for Terry. She is a ball of positive energy and delight and is, is wonderful on the show. And so check that out. And also just last night, Terry and I were on hyper RPG uh, demoing also a uh, GM on the channel. Uh, Stephen Pope's game Queers based on the oh, yeah. manga. So uh, check that out. That is actually available now on YouTube. And it was super fun to do. It was very, very gay and very, very role play. So I, I had a lot of fun with it. And uh, that was me, Abria, Terry, uh, Xander, and uh, Anna, who does uh, like Brinkley Voices, I believe is her Twitter name. I'm probably mad mangling it, but whatever. Very fun. Very Breezy queer. Voices. Yes, thank you. Um, oh wow! I know. I just realized I know like everybody. 
There you go. It's a good crew. It was very fun. It was a lot of fun. And, and Malika uh, GM'd it. Uh, but yeah, that is our show for the night. And I believe that is everything uh, that was to be our get host down. We already said tomorrow's Gen Con game. Check out all the shows that are on the channel. And please check out our coffee page and support Saving Throw Show. Thank you all very much and have a great night. <laughs>